Hello everyone. Well, it's a week of festivities for me. I've got three Christmas dues, so my liver is going to be somewhat worse for wear by the end of the week. So I've decided to go for a more basic review this time, something I've kind of done before. Lubuntu and Zubuntu. So what we're going to do is combine the two lightweight Ubuntu derivatives, the official derivatives. Now it's a shame to see that Lubuntu are still using the LXD desktop. I've been promised for oh, forever and a day that they're going to use the LXQ desktop. However, all respect to the team that they are understaffed, let's say, and are trying to accomplish a lot with small resource. This is a problem with the Linux open source world that adding more variety, more desktops, doesn't necessarily produce better results. I can see the results of a more dedicated effort with KDE. The progression they're making is just absolutely astounding, and I'm quite impressed with that desktop. Really pleased with it. It's been my desktop of choice now for some time. Yeah, you may have a lot of configuration options. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bloated and overweight. Slightly more overweight compared to the two desktops we're going to review once I finish waffling on, because I'm just trying to waste time. Because honestly, I could bring out an old review and you're probably not going to notice any difference. This is how little progress there has been. It's only a small minor increment with XFCE every couple of years at this point now, and LXDE pretty much has remained static. I could have shown you more with LXQ, but that is not the official desktop yet with Lubuntu. Looking at a couple of the comments first on the previous video, Cam Audio says, great video quids, but no camera means I have to thumbs down. Well, look, I hope this more than makes up for it for you. You can see me here in all my glory. Yay! <laughs> Arson Arson says, Gentoo next. <laughs> whoa, 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 easy there, I need a bit more time to look at Gentoo. And Cryosynth says, I want quids to go the spatry route, break out wardrobe change. <laughs> Um, hmm, how best to describe that for someone who hasn't seen that video? Uh, so Spatry starts out all very smart in a suit, and then he goes for his, um, uh, let's say, weekend dress, <laughs> and leave it at that. I know it was all done as a joke, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to go down that route, I don't think. I could break out a suit for it, just to be really smart. Just to pad this video out a little bit more, I noticed the memory requirements for Lubuntu have crept up a little bit. So they recommend that if you're using anything like Google+, YouTube, Google Docs and Facebook, you should really have one gig or two gig of RAM, ideally. But for more basic office type applications, then you can get away with, well, let's say, 512 meg RAM, but one gig is significantly better. Yeah, you can run your system with a very low amount of RAM, but the lower you have it, the more your system is going to be using a swap file on the hard drive, which is not very good for the hard drive. The speed just grinds to a halt. They do indicate some advanced usages with low RAM. But they're still talking about over 256 meg of RAM. And you know what? I remember using Lubuntu, okay, we're going back a few years now, but on a laptop with 256 meg of RAM. And yeah, it was a little bit slow, but it worked. Hmm. Anyway, it's just surprising that the memory usage has crept up so much. But some of that could be the more modern requirements of the web these days with lots of graphics, video, things that require being cached, and uh, that pushes up memory usage. So checking out the boot up time first of Lubuntu, and we can see it is rapid. The trouble is, the resource I've given it is like bludgeoning a walnut with a sledgehammer. Yeah, it's way too much for this lightweight system. Let's check out the memory usage, and we can see it's 234 meg of RAM used. Lubuntu 17.10, as well as all the other Ubuntu 17.10 derivatives, use the kernel 4.13.0. They come with the Mesa 17.2.2, for the open source AMD and Intel graphics drivers, and to the NVIDIA 384 proprietary drivers. What can I say looking around this desktop? Well, it's very basic. There is no application searcher here. However, I will point out the LX Qt desktop has that feature. So there's no point in criticizing it here because at this point, we're just beating a dead horse. The responsiveness is nice and fast. Applications open, well, pretty much immediately. 
<laughs> so that's nice to uh, well, that's nice to see. The selection of applications here is very basic. It's the lighter weight versions of some of the other applications that you will see. Uh, so like Office, we've got Abbey Word and Genumeric instead of LibreOffice. But of course, there's no reason you can't have LibreOffice. They've just chosen to pre-install lightweight defaults instead. The layout of the desktop is very basic and reminiscent of Windows 2000. And you've got the application launcher on the bottom left-hand side. You do have a couple of shortcuts there. But unlike Windows, we do have a desktop switcher, or at least unlike Windows 2000, we have a desktop switcher. And then we've got the Bluetooth, uh, that's going to be the power, networking, volume control, time, calendar, and shutdown. There is some customization you can do to the desktop. There's a few different themes you can select. Uh, there's colors you can change, the icon themes, easy select from mouse cursors, different options on the window border. But yeah, there's quite a few options here. So let's just change that. And ooh, that's a nice new look and feel. So they have provided you quite a few options in what is a basic desktop. That's good. Looking at the task manager shows that there's absolutely bugger all CPU usage there. And memory usage is still very low, despite the fact I've had a few applications open. Now one stupid little minor criticism I have here about the LXDE desktop is that it's very hard to find out the version of it. Although the applications do seem to be built specifically for LXDE, you see they don't hold like one specific version number, like you would find in say KDE or GNOME. But that really is just a me being picky because I couldn't find out the version of LXDE that was pre-installed here. And I'm just admitting that it was just me being picky. It doesn't deter from the functionality of it at all. So as you can see, it is very fast, lightweight, and responsive. So onwards to the next desktop, and that will be XFCE with Zubuntu. So checking out the boot up speed of Zubuntu, and like Lubuntu, we can see it is very quick. One very useful feature we get on this desktop in the whisker menu is the ability to search for applications. So if I want to open the terminal, I just can start typing, press enter, and open it. In terms of memory usage, we have 356 mega RAM in use, which is quite a bit higher than Lubuntu. The kernel version, Mesa, and NVIDIA drivers are all the same because it's a standard package from Canonical. One thing I did forget to do in Lubuntu was check out the processor usage at this point, but yeah, it's, as we saw later in the video, it was absolutely bugger all. And that is very similar here in Zubuntu. So it's idling while doing nothing. Perfect. What more can I ask for? So the layout of the desktop is inverted compared to Lubuntu. So we have the application launcher at the top of the screen. In order to select any of these application categories, we have to click in them. But you do have favorites and recently used applications. Also in the whisker menu, there's a shortcut to settings, lock screen, and log out. You can also resize the menu. Much more customizable there than Lubuntu. Currently open applications are at the top of the screen, and on the right hand side we have power, networking, volume control, time, calendar. There is no shutdown button in that panel, but as we've seen, it is in the whisker menu. There are a few different customizations we can do, similar to Lubuntu and the LXDE desktop. So there's not really much between them there in that respect. What I can certainly say though is the applications do look much more modern, and that is because of the curved gradients and the drop shadow effect. It is more convenient here having a central control panel type layout for the settings. That feature is missing in Lubuntu. And we do even have a searcher, but I'm not sure it's that good. For example, if I search for double, it doesn't bring up any results. Well, I am looking for mouse, so I can find it at least by typing mouse. If I was to type double in GNOME and KDE, I do believe that will bring up the settings for the mouse. Oh, and Cinnamon as well. Sorry, I keep forgetting about Cinnamon. The choice of applications is the more sort of bulkier, heavier weight compared to Lubuntu, in that we have like LibreOffice for the Office application. But let's check out performance and we can still see it's very fast and responsive. Of course, it's very fast and responsive assuming you have enough memory in your system because it's already cached, the fact that I've opened it. If I didn't have that memory, it would be a bit slower to open. 
Opening up the Funar File Manager, I am reminded of the fact I do prefer the lighter weight PC Man FM. It is actually more feature rich compared to Funar. The choice of browser is Firefox, which is the same as Lubuntu has. You can see it's still very fast to open, but perhaps a little bit slower than Lubuntu was. To finish up with here, we'll take a look at the task manager and great, it has the memory usage in a percentage. So that's 2% of 16 gig. So I don't know what that is. Um, let's just go and check it out with the terminal. So 3-M and we can see the memory usage has actually stayed relatively stable, isn't it? So 375, it's, it's crept up a little bit, but I have opened and closed quite a few applications there. In terms of low memory usage, Lubuntu is the clear winner. But in terms of look and feel, I would have to say Zubuntu looks much prettier. Yes, you can customize Lubuntu and the LXDE desktop. At least the XFCE desktop does look a little bit more curved and well, actually I was going to say modern, but the modern look seems to be very flat nowadays, doesn't it? So it's very curved anyway and more appealing to look at. But I, I would say for ease of use, because of the application searcher here, Zubuntu is a much quicker and easier system to use. Unless you start memorizing all the locations of folders. Maybe if you still have that habit and way of working, you'll be happy, but I've kind of moved on. I've gone towards the application searcher route because it is much quicker and easier. The fact you can pick up the applications within a couple of key presses, it is much quicker than searching around the menus with a mouse. So which is the best distribution? Well, that depends on the sacrifices you're willing to make. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.